I think there's a lot to love about medium format. With 120, you've got choices like 6x9, 6x7, 6x6, and more. All that extra film gives you a lot of diversity in terms of how many frames you get and the ratio of your negatives depending on the camera. Many of the cameras are pretty simple mechanically as well, meaning that anyone with a steady hand, a little knowledge, and some patience can fix their own camera. That would not include me, of course. I hate DIY, but I appreciate the option nonetheless. I think some of the designs are amazing, and the production duration of some of the models, like the Pentax 6.7, are impressive, making finding one pretty easy. Also, while I'm on the subject, Pentax 6.7 lenses, with a few notable exceptions, are relatively cheap, and the modular nature of it and other cameras make the format very appealing. When I asked my Discord group what they had to say in favor of 120, they mentioned a couple of great things I didn't consider, like the wide variety of cameras dating back over 100 years due to the age of the format, and the range of cameras from box all the way to pro. There are also some little inconsequential things too, like writing is easier on the paper backing, uh, not needing to rewind the film after because it transfers to a new spool, and generally speaking it causes you to slow down and relax a bit more than 35 millimeter. Hi everyone, Azrael Knight here, and all this being said, I personally have not had the best experience with medium format photography, the reasons of which I'll get into, and at the end I'll let you know what my plan is and if I'll give up on the format entirely. Welcome to Days of Night. Let's get the most obvious complaint out of the way first. Medium format photography is expensive every step of the way. The camera prices have risen quite a bit over the last five years across the board, but medium format's initial investment has always been pricey if you want something better than a pinhole camera or a Holga. The cost of film per shot is also more expensive. 8, 10, 12 shots doesn't compare to 36. Next on my list of grievances are the lack of features even in some of the top of the line models. Most of the cameras don't have metering or autofocus, and to me that's pretty crucial. Yes, the Pentax 6.7 has a metered prism, but many of them are failing now, and if you don't attach it right, you're going to break your camera. They have not aged well. All I want is an auto-metered, autofocus, medium format camera that costs less than 5 grand. Perhaps my most controversial opinion in the video is this. No one, and I really mean it, no one gives a hooey about your film negative resolution except you. The resolution of a film negative is and has been the battle cry of the analog enthusiast, and it's almost always the first thing I hear when I tell people that I also shoot digital. It's usually the same people who post on Instagram, too. Yes, I see you in the comments telling me that you're the exception, but the reality is unless you're printing photos on at least 16 by 20 darkroom prints, there's no difference besides internet clout. Also, what do you need to measure resolution in the first place? Right, a digital scanner or camera. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Taking a digital photo of a film negative is the same thing as recording your favorite cassette onto CD, and no one wants to hear that because the truth hurts. Speaking of scanning, when I scan a roll of 35mm film, my holder can take 18 shots at a time, so only two setups are needed. Two setups, 36 images. When I scan a roll of 120 at 6.7, I can only scan two images at a time, and I need to set up five total scans. The holder I use isn't so great either, and often the negative pops out. Now before you jump to the comments with suggestions, I scan with an Epson V800, and I know there's a whole lot of you that swear by DSLR scanning, but it's just not my thing. Besides, if I did make the switch, 35mm would still be easier, and that's my point. A few other things I want to point out are with the film itself, like bulk loading. Because there's a paper backing, bulk loading just isn't a thing. I also like shooting with expired film, and while expired 35mm holds up really well, expired medium format does not. The top and bottom of the negatives are often overexposed due to leaks, and in some cases I've seen the print lettering on the paper imprinted on the negative. Again, my Discord members chimed in, and they also mentioned the price per frame and cameras that take medium format, but not necessarily 120 requiring modification. 
So if I have so many complaints, what has stopped me from selling everything off and calling it a day? Well, the main thing is, and I'm sure we can all relate here, is the burning question, what happens if I sell it off and regret it, and worse, it's twice the price to get it all back. I also have a bunch of film in my fridge that I don't want to sell, so the only option is to shoot it. I would love to hear your ideas on what you think I should do to determine whether or not medium format is right for me, but the plan right now is to see how the rest of this year goes. Maybe I'll go on a trip and it'll be the only thing I bring with me. Perhaps there is a better, more suitable camera for me at around the same price. To be fair, a lot of what I'm basing this on is the Pentax 6.7, which is heavy and not practical for most of my shooting. I should also mention I have a baby Graflex, which I love for 6x9, and I've also slightly modified film holders for Instax Mini, that is more likely to go regardless of my decision. I realize it's not practical for me to be shooting medium format as much as 35mm, but if 2023 goes like the previous couple of years, I may decide to boil down my collection further to focus my time and money on 35mm. In the last two years, I have only shot 14 rolls of medium format film compared to 2020 where I shot about 34. I'll give you an update when the time comes to make a decision, but before I go, I'll show you some of the better photos I've taken with medium format over the last three years. Enjoy. That's all for now, folks. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you want to support the channel, consider a one-time PayPal donation, link in the description. You can also follow me on Instagram, and until next time, stay classic.